Welcome back to Super Tuesday Recap. This is your host, Chris, and I have Deepom here with me, as usual. And uh, we're back in the new year, 2018. Uh, we are here. The first show back is Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 6. Uh, fun and games with Daisy's life in a line. An unexpected friend attempts to rescue her. Uh, this is an episode directed by uh, Clark Gregg. They, they came in, started the season swinging. Came in, came in with a... Uh... Yeah, man, like... I... I love this show. I want to make that very clear before I say anything else. I love this show. It's great. Can y'all take a fucking break, please? <laughs> like, I feel like everyone else respected our, respected our time and decided to say, you know what? Let's stay off until at least two more weeks of, of, of January. Shield's like, nah, nah. We're not just coming back. We're going to hit you in the face. Well, you know what? This is all Marvel. Because, like, um, I forgot on on a, on a, a New Year's Day, the fucking Gifted came back. <laughs> Like, son of a bitch, man. Yo, I haven't seen the gifted yet. I had no idea it came back New Year's Day. Yeah, it came back New Year's Day, and I was like, "You, what are you guys? Like, I'm glad that we reviewed this three episodes at a time, because God damn it, man. I had forgot, like, until you said that just now, I had resolved, like, I had my plan for the day, and it not, did not involve me watching the gifted. Well, here's yeah. the thing. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad I waited on that one, because I think they took a break because the national championship game is tomorrow, so they don't have an episode this week. But the one ne- uh, the week uh, when everything else comes back is two hours. And I'm like, that double, yeah, 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 I'm like, yo, man, you guys could have just done like, <laughs> you guys could have waited a little bit. No. Just, oh, you could have done all three after that shuttle game. I don't know what all right, the kill- rush was. You're killing me here, man. Hey, they just came. Hey, but Agent Shield came back, kicked us in the fucking mouth. Um, first of all, the title of this episode is called Fun and Games. It should have been called Everybody Dies. Oh no, that that's one of those uh, bait and switch funny games. Was like, no, <laughs> like funny oh. games is what we call it internally. Y'all are fucked. No, they killed at least three. They killed four people. Was they, it four? Yo, they killed. Okay, because you know, we'll talk about the end of the episode because yeah, maybe those were icers. But then again, oh no, no, Cassius got his throat cut. I made sure oh, that Cassius is done. Cassius is done. I was like, well, maybe it's, he didn't. Oh, like, oh no, 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 he's done. Um, Ben, the uh, the telepath, Ben is gone. They fucking killed Tess, which I was not expecting that. Like Tess is the one that hurt me. I was like. Son of a bitch, where you? How the fuck? What the? What are we doing here, man? And then, uh, I, and I'm kind of, gl- I'm, I'm glad Grill gone. So like two, two girl, of the girl, four, yo, it's time for Grill to go. Yeah, we're time for. I was like, yo, Grill, you are, you, you fucking coon ass, human ass <laughs> motherfucker. Like you're kind of killing me right now, dog. It's like, what are you doing? Like so, like I was glad for, I was glad for uh, Grill to go, but everybody else, I'm just like, yo, why are you guys? You guys killing everybody, man? <laughs> like, and then you send May down to the earth to the surface to die. I was like. We got a lot of stuff going on here, man. It's like this is this is just too much for my heart to take, man. Everybody dies. Everybody's it felt so out of control, almost like a wild episode. But at the same time, like, you look back, you're saying now it all went in a fairly straightforward manner. No, no, it, it was all again why we love this show. It all it's it's the beautiful chaos of this show where everything is all over the, the place. Um, you know, obviously. You know, this is the episode where we get everybody. Well, actually, I guess technically next episode will be. But, you know, Fitz is, we finally see Fitz interacting with the rest of the team. Like, we got, the last episode before the break, we had Fitz, you know, the, how Fitz got to the future. Uh, well, actually, it's present day time now, if you want to put it that way. Um, right. And uh, we now get Fitz interacting. with. So, it's just, this is one of those things that, like, when Fitz goes up and starts talking to Gemma, but we know she can't hear him. Yo, torture, oh. torture. To- I was like, they're gonna kill her before she can hear all this. God damn it! Like, I, for the record, I am fully on the someone's going to die train, and I'm terrified. The, the, after this episode, how can you not be? Yo, they're both like, we should get married. I propose first, but no, no, that's too cute. Yeah, they already still in future time. Deal with that shit. Maybe if you make it back. Right now, get like, stay alive. Man, when Fitz said we survived the battle, bottom of the Atlantic, I was just like, oh, yeah. I mean, it just. <sighs> you're almost like, yeah, we did, Fitz. <laughs> right, right, the audience, right, like, we, we did, did survive we that did shit. Do that, man. We, we all make it. We did survive that, man. You're right. Our, you know what, Fitz? Our love is strong enough to survive this. You know? You start talking back to the screen and shit. It's like, yeah, man, you're right. Um, But again, you know what I love about this is? And it, it's something we always bring up. These are spies. They're good at their fucking jobs. So yeah, yeah. as soon as Cassie comes over and it's like, what are you doing? Fitz turns on a dime. And he, he becomes evil Fitz. And I'm sorry, but evil Fitz is so good. He's I, I, he's my favorite Fitz. <laughs> like, like he turns so quickly on, why is your servant not, why is your slave not answering me? 
how do you expect your slave? How do you expect your? How do you expect me to, as as an honored guest, to be able to to handle things and deal with things if your slaves can't even listen to what I'm saying? Catcher's like, oh well, my my bad, my bad, dude. Let me turn it off for you. It's like Fitch is so good at this, man. And, and you know this whole bringing your your traits from the uh, the framework. Oh. Double O Fitz has now got like this dark side <laughs> that when he taps into it, I get like a, like you know when he's at the dinner table and like he's just positing on how you'd make humans fight. I'm like. Some, that's some straight up like super villain shit fits. It is, and like I was thinking, like Chris is gonna support it because Chris is the devil, but oh, the rest I, of us, dude. I well, I support it because it's it's Fitz using what he again. It's just mm-hmm. being a spy. He he's using what he knows. Like forget, forget, like that was a good moment, but the really good moment for me was when he was talking to Cassis about his father, mm-hmm. and he 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 had that connection about shitty fathers, and I was like, oh, this is. This is some good shit to hear, yo. Fitz is like you're you're kind of getting me, Fitz. Like I'm, if I didn't know you, if I didn't know that you weren't evil anymore. I but believe- that's the best part about this is that now we've got five years under our belt with this character, and so like you're saying, he's a spy and he's very good at his job. This motherfucker was too scared to leave the boat, the the, the ship in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like we've watched Fitz grow into this, like to where everything that happened in the last five minutes is completely plausible. Because mm-hmm. yeah. on its face. Lab nerd, travels the future, and pull some Indiana Jones, Han Solo bullshit to, to, to get everyone free. That does not work. Unless you've got, you've shown how. Mm-hmm. And for all the things people have said about the, I was at an event last night, and, you know, I'm stupid. So I ended up talking to one of the bartenders about Aims of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> and I ended up defending the first 17 episodes. <laughs> And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, look, man, we all love the twist, right? He's like, yeah, yeah. The twist doesn't matter unless the world's already established. And the things that we love right now, they don't matter unless we learn to love Fitz. Remember when Fitz had the dwarves, the little yeah. drones? Yeah. Well, forget that. I remember when people did not like Fitz and Simmons. I remember oh, yeah. when people didn't like Those Scott. Those were the worst. They, th- 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 that's the ultimate expression of you because that's a hatred of joy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hatred of joy. Yeah. Fitz and Simmons have been charming since day one. Yeah, and but they, but they, but well, charming. But then when you see like, and, but, and I get it, right? So they're charming, but you're like, well, this is supposed to be a spy organization. Like even 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 Coulson was yeah. like, you're like kind of aloof. Like what's going on here? And then you find out it's like, oh, but they are good at their jobs because like yeah, they're aloof. Yeah, they're fun. But it's like it's like when you're inside. Like we as outsiders, if we were to look at you know CIA agents or like people who who do this stuff for a living, you'd be like. Oh man, they're they're so like serious and blah blah blah. But I'm like, if you saw them amongst themselves, they probably joke. They probably have fun. Like when they're not on, they probably just look like regular people and they probably act like regular people. They have a rapport with each other, right? Mm-hmm. It's like that's what this is. We're we're seeing inside. We're seeing behind the veil. But yeah. once they put the face on for everybody to see, they're fucking badasses. <laughs> Even more than that, you got to realize that the first part of season one was literally business as usual. Mm-hmm. It's how things are supposed to work. Like certain things went off the rails, obviously, the the, the blood and, and and all that stuff. But like for the very beginning, people, the parts that people complain about, that was in just shielding the day to day. Everything since then has been a calamity of clusterfucks. So the beginning of the season, when 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 uh when Coulson was like, huh, space, we haven't done that yet. You know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's like ah, what? well, that is new. And, and that's something right. too. It's like I I think that the, we've seen this team work to well so get well together. Like let's jump to the end real quick about how when they, when they when they escape, nothing went as planned. Mm-hmm. But and and we never saw all three of them be able to talk. Like uh, Simmons and 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 Daisy talk. We were like, yeah. So what's the plan? Simmons was like, well, I have a knife. She's like, yeah. We need a bigger plan than that. Well, when they drop the shield, we'll figure something. When they, when they turn my inhibitor off, we'll figure something out, right? And Simmons never got to talk to Fish to figure out what his plan was. But they all worked together. Like when things did not go as well, like okay, first it was the shield going up, and Daisy's like, "Well, fuck, well, there's that. I can't, I can't use my powers on them now." Um, and uh, you know, they brought May in to fight Ben. Oh, that was actually no, that was earlier. But like all this stuff was happening, like shit, what's going? on? Oh, she's gonna fight. Uh, scenario. So, what the fuck's going on with that? Like, all this stuff happened. And they're like, oh well, we'll wait till we see what we have to get our opportunity. And Fist just said, "Fuck it," pulled the gun out, and <laughs> you know, pulled pull the ice out, started shooting people. Simmons went and cut Cassie's neck. They jump over the side. Fitz hits the uh, slow motion, uh, shoots the um the thing to to come up because Daisy had gotten taken down. 
and then they still had time to like propose and then walk and then casually walk away. It's like, do you guys understand that that plan did not come to like did not go as anybody had planned because they hadn't talked about it. Nobody knew what the fuck they were doing, but when shit hit the fan, everybody did what they were supposed to do. Everybody had a role, knew what they knew what they were trying to. And, and when and when one thing went down, like the fact like Daisy got her and him to turn back on and fell. Fitz and, and Simmons just got together and was like, "All right, cool. Well, Plan B. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just well, with the next one. Like it's just like we're gonna. You know, what we're gonna do. We're gonna move forward. Like we don't give this team enough credit for how how often their plans do not work. <laughs> their plans do not go. And so they move on to the next thing. It's like, well, fuck it. Like, you know, people die in this episode. Like when they see Tessa, they're like, oh, fuck, that's fucked up. But um, so what's the next plan? Like, what's the next Yo, step? It's like, there's no time to linger. There, there isn't. It's like, we got shit to do. They're professionals. Like, we forget that. Like, these are, these are professional spies who, like you said, have been through five years of fucked up shit that this is literally just another day at the office for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Changes. just like, all right, here we go again. Like when Fitz is reeling off all the things about the universe trying to get them apart, I'm like, yo, Fitz, like go home. Like <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not look, maybe. Maybe you are meant to be together. Then again, you just got further for 80 years. So right. maybe we should have the conversation. Right. He made that list and I'm like, motherfucker, why are you here? Mm-hmm. I don't like she'll find her way back to me. What do you mean? <laughs> look. <laughs> I'm getting real sick and tired of chasing Jim and Fitz and crossing hot day multiverse. Like we forget, like this motherfucker jumped through a fucking portal to save Simmons. Like, <laughs> like I, before he did that, he was uh, all by himself, undercover in the Middle East, and stole the sc- the, the scroll from these people. Mm-hmm. He was he was he was double Fitz coming off brain injury. Yes. Like this is this is not. It's oh. like you're right. He jumped through a hole. In the <laughs> I didn't like and now, like at a certain point, like if we took objectively honestly, we're like yo, fish, she's, she's not feeling you like that. <laughs> right. She's ran to the planet. Now she's ran to the future. Like you can't like I, I don't think we will understand, like, I don't think that love exists. I don't think the love that Fitz has for Simmons exists in real life. Cause it's it's it, it, I don't let Susan watch the show. Don't ask this question. <laughs> Would you like, don't ask that? <laughs> Like, why would you ask that? What, do you want? Do you want that answer? Because I literally, I literally did forget. Like, you forget something. Like, I did forget that Fitz did the whole double O Fitz thing first to get the scroll from folks. Forgot about that. And then, like I said, the scene where he goes and saves her in that season. So the most like, what the fuck? Because everybody has their back turned. Like, we can't do this. We can't do this. And Fitz is like, I'll be right back. <laughs> and jumps through a fucking portal to save Simmons. Like, this is insane, guys. The only thing more insane than that was um. Uh, 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 Coles and Halo jumping into the portal, but like, I mean, shit. <laughs> like, come on, guys. Halo, Colson really wanted to kill. He really wanted to kill Ward. Ward. Like, he really had it in the war. And that's another thing, too. It's like, I don't know why I didn't think that these, like, we should have known people were going to die because shit, when we first met, um, not Virgil, like, he got fucking wig split in the first, like, 20 minutes of the fucking episode. Yo, Clark Greg was bragging about this episode. He's like, yo, <laughs> it's bloody. <laughs> And I want to take a second because I, I went through and looked. He's got two short. He's got two film credits and one television episode credit. Great job directorially by, uh, by I almost called him Colson, by Clark Craig. <laughs> um, I thought that it was really the structure of the episode, and obviously gives some tip of the cap to the writer. I think the writer was the script was done by. Hold on, I'm trying to. Oh, I don't have it here. I'll look it up later. But uh, he's helped by the script, but. You gotta understand that the cold open for this episode off of a, off of a hiatus was introducing to a character we've never met. And they were framed it and they're able to use uh textual elements and contextual elements to make us care about this character so that when bit when um <clears throat> was it uh what's his name? A Ben. The which one? It, okay, sorry. When Ben it's Wait. taken for Terry Genesis. Oh so much Flint, it. Flint, Flint, the new kid. Yeah, yeah sorry, Flint. I, was, I, was, I was like, Flint, no, Ben's a telepath. Yeah, yeah. No, Flint. Well, with Flint, which honestly, I think I forgot it because I thought the name was too on the nose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think it was the one time I was like, Flint, hmm, what are his powers? Are? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's interesting because they were able to frame, like, even the way it's shot, like shooting him, like waking up hidden and all the things that they did to make you care about this character and then to kill him was one bravely written and directed because they didn't hide from it. It wasn't like he killed him on screen. It wasn't like a small thing. It was, oh, okay. 
Mm-hmm. Right. No, it was a rat. Yeah, it like what they did with Flint was because you had met him once before when he was sleeping in the trolley. You know, and, right. and Tessa oh taking care, God. right? And Tessa taking so you only you'd only and then they'd also kind of set you up with the whole thing about them taking kids and things like that. So it was perfect to kind of open up with this character and go, oh, what are they what are they taking him for? Like this kid is trying to survive, and then you find out they're taking him for Terra Genesis. You're like, ah, oh, fuck. And then he doesn't have a family, so it makes it even worse because you know they also set up the whole thing with the kids were happy to be in humans because they had families to take care of. It's like, oh, he has nobody. Mm-hmm. So who the fuck would he be taking care? Of? Like this is fucked up. He doesn't. He thinks that he thinks it's okay because he'll be, he'll be able to get a a, a new uh, a new life and live better. But he doesn't know. Right. He didn't know what was on the other side and what they were doing. Like he didn't understand that. And so it's like, yo, like he was he was upset that he ended up killing Grill. But I'm like, yo, dude, that's what you were gonna be doing. Right. That was gonna be what they you they trained you to do to kill people. Like, so, so you're ready to have the fun conversation where his powers and Quake's powers are working opposite? Oh, no, no. Dude, I, I, already, I already figured that out. Okay. I was already like... <laughs> so like, huh. All right. So I got a solution here. Mm-hmm. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. No, I saw that. I saw that. Mm-hmm. We're going to we're gonna get our gifted on with uh, <laughs> the, 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 the Strokers. The, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I figured oh, that. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. I was like, oh, so you can put together rocks and she can kind of... Mm. Well, one... So here's the, here's the question, though. Because we know they were doing experimentations using the, the blood of some of the inhumans they were taking do you think that maybe some of the stuff that was with oh actually no because i think they were putting that into the baby so it wouldn't work with them so yeah. now nah, so that doesn't work never mind but um no I, I noticed that though i was like huh we have two earth kind of based uh inhumans right now hmm interesting so one one yeah thing. and it looks like earth's gonna be a big set piece for the next couple episodes Right, right. Which is one of those things we're like, that, we're going, we're going to, spa- we're going to space. We're going to be in space a lot of times. They're like, well, actually, there is a surface of the planet that we could actually, yeah, and that, that may get sent to. Right. <laughs> and so I think you're right. Like this was obviously the setup episode, but to pack so much of the setup episode, even the beginning when, um, when Flint's scared, mm-hmm. and he and you know, just tacos, and he says, "What are tacos?" And we get Mac to just off the top rope with the comedy. Right. Wait, what kind of horrible future is this? I'm like, right. first of all, Mac, you know what kind of future this is. Well, that and, and then when when Yo Yo was talking, to, still talking to Flint, talking about, uh, you know, uh, she thought she had been, she had tried cocaine, and he was like, "Yo, dial it back, Escobar." <laughs> like, I love it, and it's and it's, it's something to say about the show that it, the characters are able to occupy these spaces simultaneously because if you remember, like most recently we've been kind of faced with the fact that Mac lost his daughter again, right, and. Some shows would say, let's milk that as some sort of overly dramatic subplot, but I think Angel Shield is on one way kind of realistic, another way kind of ideal. Like we all have bad things happen to us, but we we do our best to keep moving forward. And I guess in a high pressure situation, like I don't know, being trapped on the space station up orbiting a destroyed Earth, you would do kind of want to stay locked in. That and um here's the thing. So you have Flint here, he's a young kid, he has inhuman powers now and doesn't have a family, but you have uh Yo Yo and uh Mac. You know, Mac lost, oh, lost a child. Oh, look at you. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, trying to. Yeah, you know, I maybe, support maybe, that. Maybe can have a little. Well, because uh, there was a couple of things. One, Yo-Yo was very protective of, of Flint. And even the, the fact that Yo-Yo so. came in and fucking stole him. Like, when Yo-Yo disappeared and then, and then yanked him, I was like, yo, Yo-Yo with the same. Yo, that's fucking. I didn't even know what happened. I was like, yo, maybe he's maybe he's invisible. Maybe he's like a. That was, I was like, I was, I was, <laughs> the same things that they were wrong about. I was I was very wrong about. Too. Right. Maybe he is invisible. I don't right. know. Maybe, shit. maybe he's a gas. Maybe he'll come back later on or something like that. And then come back and the yo-yo has him. I'm like, yo, I forgot we did have we do have a speedster. <laughs> right. I, I forgot we had a speedster. <laughs> um. So there's that. But then also when when Mac and Colson are talking before they find Tess is dead. You know, they're talking about, you know, uh, when, when Colson's like, yo, he should be playing basketball or he should be, you know, doing this. And then Max is like, well, he could be an accountant. You know, it's just like, you know, Max, no, he could be, he could be treasurer of his high school class. Yeah. Well, because well, also, you got to think about it. Like, you know, he was like, you know, he, he had learned how Mac to. was tech support. Mac yeah. was the engineer. Mm-hmm. He got thrust into this shit. Yeah. So, uh, no, nah, man, I, I, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, he, he, his test is gone. He got nobody else to look after him now. So I'm just saying, you're right. He got Mac and Yo-Yo. I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. Just, just putting some stuff out there. Um, like the, you know what? That's, hey, that, that's, that's good writing. I, I appreciate you saying that because now if it doesn't happen, be mad. Right. Like, you had an opportunity, guys. <laughs> Chris showed you the way. Yeah. I mean, well, and that's the thing about it. It's like, it's, it, it's just, I think it's going to happen because this show does a really good job of leading you around to certain things like that and showing you, mm. you know? And it um, doesn't feel like 
overwrought or something that's not earned. Right. And, and but they, it does feel effective. Right. And and they do these small little things like like with all this stuff that happened in this episode, we actually got a lot of background information on Cassius that we hadn't had in mm-hmm. five previous episodes. We found out that his father is the emperor. His brother is more and more in favor. His father basically, you know, there's questions of whether his father banished him to look over the earth place or look over earth or whether he, you know, he asked him or whatever, but he clearly lost sure he got banished because yeah. he sounded a lot like the guy who's like, no, no, it was a mutual breakup. Right, was, right, right, was, right, right, right. Totally. No, yeah. we agreed to separate. Yeah, no, no, that's not what happened. Um, and, and, it's very, and, and he's very sensitive about it, right? Because that one... Uh, <laughs> That, that mad sensitive, oh, super super sensitive. Like when when <laughs> when that dude was kind of giving him some 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 shade at the table, it was like, yeah, you know, I was worried about you. You know, like he was talking to like your your boy who wanted you to break up with your girl, but it's like trying to com- comfort you, but it's not really comfort. It's like, yeah, man, I was I'm really <laughs> worried about you <laughs> and how you're doing here. Yeah, you looking kind of sad. Are you okay? You want a hug? You know, it was, like, he was it was trolling the shit out of him, but um. Yeah, uh, so you find out about that. You find out that uh, Sonar is apparently like an orphan that he took in. Because, yes, what do you uh, call her, a spare? Yeah, call her a spare. And just like, I'm like, mm. and, and then we meet his brother. Yeah, we meet his brother, you know, and what was it, uh, Falnock or something, that was his name, Falnock? Yeah, it's just like that yeah. just, you, you get all this information, it's like, oh. And so then you find out, it's like, oh, we got somebody who's even worse than Cassius because... Paul Nock is in actually in favor of you know the emperor and the, and the father, and so he's actually worse than Cassius if you think about it. If, if I may, if you do have to write off a, a compelling villain mid season and replace him with a different villain, this is how you do it. Now you don't do it, I Luke Cage. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, like, like normally I would say, oh, you're lampshading this. Like, oh, maybe the actor to leave he gives a new a new Cassius without giving you the Cassius, but. I think that the way they established this episode with Ponarian, or excuse me, with, yeah, yeah Ponarian. No, it, fall, it, fall not, because I think Senator, uh, Ponarian is the guy that was shading. Ponarian is a shady one. Yeah. But, like, he established, by that conversation at the, <clears throat> excuse me, at the dinner table, established a dynamic before we even met Cassie's brother. Right. It establishes that, like, no matter how high and mighty they projected Cassius, there have been hints, there have been little moments where you're like, oh, this guy's not quite what he seems, but he always seems to put on these airs. It, it, it went from a guy who's putting on airs to a guy who's actively combating his family, and it's an antagonistic relationship. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> when everything's cast in that light, it allows us to get attached to the new character of his brother without having to get Orner's backstory or a big expedition dump. It's oh, it's Cassius' his brother, and that's all we need to know to know that one, his relationship with Cassius is going to be strained. So we know two that he's probably a higher ranking person than Cassius, and that three, Cassius is going to be desperate for his approval. Well, uh, immediately when uh, Enoch came in, it's like, yo, told Fitz, oh, we got a problem. Like, you yo, know, we got somebody. Exactly. They did a lot. They did a really good job of creating an atmosphere to where the new character, the new villain, would not be questioned by the audience. Right. And then, and then, when, and then, and then, when, uh, Fallout comes in and then starts like you know shitting on Cassie. She's like, "Well, we haven't seen that before because Cassie from a was, great like, distance, right? You know, just he just came in and just like, yeah, we just you 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 need to you know, you know, you're you're kind of boring me. You're kind of wasting my time. You know, we know like you know." Uh, just all this, I was like, came in and shitted on this place. Like, oh, we're, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've done a lot with this place. So I couldn't tell. Like, he just, like, he just, just the unapproving, you know, family member. It comes in and just like, yeah, this guy's a little bit of a more of a bigger asshole. Um, and then on top of that, you keep Sonara around. Mm-hmm. So you've gotten rid of Cassius, but if you think about it, Cat, uh, and, and 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 again, they they did it with setting up the. It's, just, it's the small things in this in the show. Fona does it. He tells Cassie, it's like, well, put Sonara against, uh, you know, uh, a Daisy because, well, you hide behind her anyway. She's the greatest warrior you have. So right there, you even kind of, in a way, put Sonara above as a more of a higher threat than Cassie's. Because even her, his, his brother thinks that she's more of a fighter and more dangerous than he is. You know? So... Mm-hmm. And that was uh, that. That was an easy way. That, like you said, that's how you get rid of a villain and replace him with a a, a, a bigger villain. <laughs> you know, <Exactly. laughs> up the stakes without having to drastically reset your show. Right. You know. So uh, that's gonna. And I'm really interested to see what happens with the Sonara thing now, because uh, that Sonara and um, Daisy fight. Yeah. 
Like uh, when yeah. and, it, and it did a good job of feeling like maybe just maybe Cassie's the only one who has a leash on her. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like her her off of the reservation seems like it'd be a problem. Yeah. Um uh, when, until May gets her revenge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When uh, we did oh, I can't wait for that fight. Because um, <laughs> even because like because again again they set it up right because they were talking and 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 and, and uh, uh, Coulson was like you know uh, I'm not worried May could take on a Cree but you know she was injured with her leg like so it's like she was injured so that's why she couldn't I'm worried about her but if it was healthy May versus a healthy Cree oh, I'm taking May <laughs> right right so don't let May get healthy yo. don't let her you better keep her injured because the minute she yo, gets healthy, healthy May is a problem uh, Cree you just need to just Reevaluate some things. Right. Help. Let's keep May healthy. Keep May not healthy for your sake. Right. So when we did, uh, when we were at New York Comic Con, we talked. We, we interviewed some of the cast, and we I talked to. I was talking to actual uh, Clark Gregg and, and, and Chloe Bennett, and I was asking them about some of their favorite, you know, moments and things like that. And Chloe mentioned that they had they had already shot this episode. They already shot the her fight scenes, and she mm-hmm. said she re- that was her that was her favorite thing. She loved the fight scene that. Uh, Clark had directed for them for this upcoming season, and I'm like, see why? Like, you know, one, she got to use her powers in, in cool ways, like her stopping those uh, the the, the, the metal balls and then firing yeah. back at it. It's not like that was awesome, but then you also remember again, yo, know, Daisy can fight without her powers. <laughs> you this know, May Junior, y'all, like, don't please don't forget right. that. Like, she, she was whooping. She, she, I mean, she was doing pretty good, and then when she basically force punched uh, Sonara down. God damn, man! It worked, right? And it's like this is why you got to keep May. This is why you, this is why you got to keep the inhibitor on her. Because if you don't keep the inhibitor on Daisy, <laughs> I don't know how you stop her. It's a problem. It's a fucking problem. Like man, dude, she levitated again, again. She was levitating and was about to wreck everybody. Yo, <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad to put the inhibitor back on because I don't think I was ready for what was about to happen, dog. Yo, man, yo, uh, she's about to wreck a lot of people. <laughs> Good God, <laughs> like that shit was. And I couldn't get mad at yo. They they fucked with you first. They start, in in her defense, they started it. Yo, when her and and uh and and, and like <laughs> when 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 her and, and Simmons were talking, and she was just like, uh, and she was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna kill Cassie. She's like, well, not if I get to him first. And I'm like, well, you know, she got you beat there, uh, Daisy. Rock, paper, scissors, who's gonna get him? <laughs> Right, man. I love their. I love their. Like, I love that moment when you had uh, Simmons and 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 Daisy talking again. I mean, it's just what's always been great about this show is when you can get these characters that you know the, all the characters on the show, no matter who you put them together. Like sometimes you don't think about that pairing, but they work mm-hmm. out really well. And we forget that hey, it was Simmons and and Daisy last season that worked together. And so this season, you know, you put them back together. It's just, it's just like, yeah, you know, I guess us again, saving the world, you know, we, we got to do what we got to do. It's just like, they work so well together. I love that little moment of them just talking about it's, like, it's, I think part of it's because there's all such strong characters mm-hmm. and that no one really feels, you don't feel like anyone's taking a backseat for anyone else at all. Mm-hmm. They're tell their story. Yeah. And yeah. I think I really appreciate that. You're right. Because it it for me it, it allows the mix and matching of the characters to really pay off and really matter. Yeah, when they, they were just sitting there talking, it was like, yo, and then Fitz showed up. Like, he's like yeah, I know it's weird, right? Yeah. Shows up with shows, <laughs> shows up with a bounty a, hunter. Yeah, shows, I miss my cardigans. Like, yeah. like what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. He showed up with a bounty hunter. Got his own ship. It's like, yeah, I know that's a baller move. I was like, yo, come on. I like, mean, it wasn't. I'll be more concerned, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a baller move. I won't lie, but but again, it goes back to the, like how well this team works together in the fact that it didn't phase him. It's like, yeah, how did he get here? I don't know. Like any other show would have been spent most time spending with the character trying to figure out how this other character yeah, showed up. Had him repeat the entire last episode. Right. And they're just like, well, no, we'll, we'll figure it out. Like we're here now. Like we don't, we don't waste time. Like I love, this is one of the few shows that is 22, 23 episodes a season, but they don't waste episodes. They don't waste time no, like, doing that. They tell, and, and I wish so many other shows would do this. Like so many people was, was like, "Hey, you know, we don't need twenty-two episode seasons and things like that." And, like, and you're right, some shows don't need that. But if you're going to do it, don't waste time. Treat right. your audience with enough intelligence that we know they can figure out, and that the, the kind of like the characters on the show know it too. Like we're not going to rehash how Fitz got here because the audience knows, and the characters really don't need to know at this point. Do they really care? Need- like you wouldn't care. Like oh god, how did he get here to save me? No, no, no. no. Right. Thank God he's here to save me. Right. 
Like when they when like what will happen is there will be a moment when they're all when they have a chance to breathe and then Coulson will look at Fitz and be like, "Yo, how'd you get here anyway? Can we just go back that way?" And that'll be it. And he'll be like, "No, I can't." He'll give a quick explanation. We're done. No need to rehash. No need to go through all of it. It's done. It's over with. And it'll it'll happen like maybe maybe next episode if they have a chance to breathe. But that's what it is. It's like, yo, when you have downtime. I bet it happens like during a firefight. Right. Get here anyway. Can we talk about that later? Like, right. That's how they're going to address it. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Um, I can almost hear Mac off stream like, can we please discuss this later? Yeah. The only the only thing I kind of wish I had more, like, I love the May versus the tel- Telepath Ben. I kind of want to made a win because I was like, when she hit him that one time, I was like, I didn't think. I was like. Yeah, what if May just starts doing things on instinct? Cause May's a badass. I mean, I mean, you couldn't go that way, but I was. Like, they made May such a badass that even hurt. I was still thinking that like, she can, might be able to beat Ben. <laughs> and that's might. that's a testament to what they've done with that character. <laughs> I, I'm, I was with you. I was like, yo, she can. She, she, I don't. She, 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 you go bet against May, right? I mean, like, yeah, this guy can read minds. That's very impressive. <laughs> Well, that's that's cute. What people's ass? That's your superpower. What's your power? I whip people's ass. What? That's it. <laughs> yeah, I can read minds. So like, can you hear what you I'm thinking? That's real good. Mm. You're about to be unconscious. Right. Get the fuck out. Oh man, I, I will say there is one little undercurrent, current theme here that I, I want to bring up that I think is going to come uh, back because again, the show is you know they do it. The people that have been helping this team end up dead. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's going to come back at some point where they're going to somebody's going to address it because they've lost uh, was it Virgil or Nigel? I can't remember what his original name was. The, the first guy they've gotten um, Virgil. Virgil, they got Virgil, uh, Ben now. Uh, Tess, where's Deke, man? Huh? Where's Deke? Deke? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, but but I, 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 I noticed I hadn't seen him in a while. Well, I. Well, we didn't get him last episode because it was the Fitz episode. And this episode, he's probably off spending his money. But he'll probably be back next episode and be like, yo, so where's Tess? I was like, yeah, so um, she's dead. And and I, I think Sorry. he's going to be the he's gonna be the character that brings it up. He's yeah. going to be the character. Because you remember they locked him up. That's why. They locked him up. I forgot. That's it. Yeah, close locked up Deacon. Yeah, they right. locked him up. So, you know, they're like, he's going to be the one like, so everybody around you dies. So why should I help you? I'm just going to end up dead. You haven't been able to protect anybody. And I think that's going to be something they have to address. It's like at some point they're going to realize, okay, we we need to do this and people are going to die, but we are now like basically recruiting in people who don't, who aren't prepared for this, who aren't like us. And so how are we going to do that? So, um, yeah. Also, real quick, uh, there was an interesting thing that um, Cassie has said. Um, when he introduced May, he basically said a terrorist, or, terrorist organization and an assassin and so it looks like that shield was labeled a terrorist organization. I mean, so that means that uh, it, it brings to the question, like, so um, do they ever fix that? Right. So that yeah. was an interesting, an interesting little thing there uh, that I, I noticed when he said that. And um, yeah, man, what can I say? I just love this fucking show. This show is just fucking great. It's so well done. There's really no excuse for it. Right. So um, you got anything else you want to say about this episode? Um. No, I think that's about it, man. I think uh, I really like. I, I'm I'm curious what's happening with Enoch. Yes. Um, oh, I love that character. By the way, I'm, I'm now. Yeah. I'm now full. <laughs> Enoch, and like, oh man, like when he just shows up, he's blue and he's like, he's like, and the, and the other Cree was like, "Who the fuck are you?" It's like, I'm Cree. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> and I've always been. Like, right. He's like, I'm not people. Like, wait a <laughs> second. Like, wait a fucking. Maybe I should ask more questions. <laughs> We didn't seem to trust this bald motherfucker very quickly. Oh, like I'm not gonna lie, he was smaller than the other creep. Like it was just everything about him just didn't fit. And I'm just like, and the other creep's like, yo, what the fuck is, who the fuck is, who the fuck is this dude? Like, he's like, no, I'm good. Wait, you going to the service? Yeah, I am. It's, it's cool. It's fine. You know. <laughs> I'm back. See you in a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Um. Uh. But yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I, I would love to see more of uh Enoch too. So. Yeah, but this show, man, this show. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so uh, make this announcement right now. Uh, if you were listening to the Insanity Check yet, you've heard this. If not, then you're hearing it for the first time here. Uh, we have a screener, private screener for uh, Black Panther. Hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully. We have the theaters for both L.A. and D.C. Uh, and um, the information is this. The tickets are hopefully going on sale 
on this Friday at noon. Uh, you'll be able to get them if you follow us on the website, social media, things like that. Um, and we'll put tickets on sale. They're probably around like twelve, thirteen dollars. They're gonna be as close to cost as possible. Um, and the theater in uh, L.A. is the Cinemark at Pike in Long Beach. And that screener is February 16th at 8 p.m. Uh, and the one in D.C. is the Regal Cinema at Gallery Place in Washington, D.C. And that is at 12 p.m. on the 17th. Um, so just uh, we'll be uh, putting the tickets out. Like I said, hopefully the goal is this Friday, uh, next Friday, the 12th. Uh, at uh, at noon, tickets will go on sale, so you can buy your tickets. Um, Shanna's working on some things for the LA ones. We might be able to have some um, some uh, some special uh, other special things going on with that one. And uh, so for both of them, we're gonna have to actually give you guys physical tickets for these. So what's gonna happen is you have to meet us up at some point to get your ticket. We'll be having meeting times hopefully that f- Friday of the opening, so uh, February. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I won't make any promises for the for the uh, for the LA one because uh, Shannon and them, Sh- Shannon and Lance are going to work out their own thing. But for the DC one, I'm hoping to have some times posted up uh, either that Thursday and Friday uh, evening. Did you guys meet me somewhere and pick up your tickets, or earlier uh, that Saturday to pick up the tickets? Um, so uh, make sure you're going to want to get there early when the, when the thing happens. I'll make sure I put that in the, in the ticket stuff. So don't just like if you try to show up at like 1201 or try to do like the, you know, 15 minutes late thing, you are not going to be able to get in. So, <laughs> you won't have a ticket you won't, you, unless you have unless you have your ticket already. You won't be able to get it. So if I'm you're glad gonna, you said CPT without saying CPT. Yeah, you know, I'm trying. I'm not trying, right. I'm trying to, you know, I'm just letting everybody know. <laughs> That, uh, You're all getting better in 2018, guys. I'm trying to all get better. I'm trying to trying to improve myself. <laughs> but no, it's really I'm really excited about this. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Uh, we have uh, we'll, I'm I'm really excited to see everybody. And and then for both of them, we'll be working out some some details on like what we can do afterwards, like meeting up, getting some drinks and things like that afterwards. So really excited about this. I'm really happy about uh, seeing Black Panther and all the promotion that they're doing for this film so far. Man, it's fucking great. Like I just saw uh, there's a Reddit thread that had. Um, uh, image from LA where they paint apparently they have this big ass uh billboard that's like over like that that's on, on the side of the highway with Black Panther like I don't think people realize just how much promotion is going into this film how and it's sad to say this in 2018 but like how revolutionary it is to see a black film getting promoted and pumped like this mm-hmm. like right. I can't fucking wait yo it's it's truly incredible. So, uh, yeah, I, I know we are not the only people who are trying to do screeners, too. So it's like I know a lot of other people are doing this. So there's so much buzz and so much stuff happening around this movie. Like, I'm I'm really excited to see how this goes, man. So uh, if you can do it, if you're in either L.A. or D.C., those uh, that opening weekend, um, get your tickets when they go on sale and and meet us uh, at our screeners and we'll have some fun. So uh, and again, so make sure you subscribe. Super Tuesday recap here will be. Back soon with um, you know the flat Arrowverse stuff is coming back not this week but the following weekend. Um, we're not doing Black Lightning, uh, but Shannon and the Doctor are. I'm actually kind of glad that they're they're kind of rotating that and listening to tomorrow, which mm-hmm. means we no longer have to do two shows, <laughs> two reviews on that Wednesday anymore. It'll just be the Flash and we can be done. Um, but it also means that it doesn't mean we're going to give you guys less content. We're going to be starting a weekly, I'm starting a weekly column called weekly pull list. Thank you to deep on for the title. <laughs> and, uh, we'll be talking about the different comics I'm reading that week and I'll be writing that up. So again, I said this on, on, on the insanity, uh, on the insanity check. If you want to get all the content from the NPR network, you got to get to, you got to, got to follow us and make sure you go to all the different sites. So it's not just the podcast, you know, we got a lot of different articles and things we're putting up and we're writing on mtrnetwork.net so make sure you go there and check that stuff out make sure you're in the facebook group because i put some of the articles there in the facebook group so mtr network and the facebook group um but also youtube we're putting up some some unique content on youtube uh there like we have a review we have reviews we have uh you know little uh little pieces i'm, I'm gonna do some black panther stuff like i know we already did a character corner on that but i might uh cut some stuff out and maybe do some more black panther videos so coming up for that stuff so I know we have our Black Lightning interviews that are going to be coming out hopefully this week. So, like, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash in, in, um, MTR Network. And what is the – because we also have a unanimous decision. I, I'm first going to start promoting this. We have our unanimous decision uh, on YouTube as well. What is the channel? Is it just uni- – is it UDPod or unanimous decision? 
I can't you remember. Caught me. Yeah, I I've caught you completely remember. off guard on this one. <laughs> I was like, uh, it's one of those. I can tell you that. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's just unanimous decision. I think it's just unanimous decision. But we have a our own channel for unanimous decision now, and I know um, D Palm is going to be putting some more stuff out for that. Yep, yep, yep. So. Yep, it's, just, it's, you know, year. it's not unanimous decision. I don't know what it is. We'll figure it out. Here's UD Pod, but we'll figure it out. Somebody actually has a unanimous decision already, but I'll, I'll figure it out with the channels for that. But stay tuned. We're going to be having stuff up for that and putting out more content for there. So just follow us all and uh, let us know, guys. So uh, thank you guys very much for supporting, and uh, we will be back soon. So thank you guys. Peace.